In the last video, we did a problem involving a rock shot upward and then caught at its initial height. In that case, the upward and downward trips are symmetric. If it takes 3 seconds to get to the maximum height, it would take 3 seconds to come back down. If its initial velocity is in upward 30 meters per second, its final velocity just before being caught is 30 meters per second downward. Now we're going to look at an asymmetric problem. For example, an object is tossed upward and caught either at a height below its starting height or above its starting height. For example, a package is dropped from a helicopter while it's ascending at 5 meters per second. The moment the package is released, the helicopter is 280 meters above ground. How long does it take for the package to strike the ground below? At what speed does it strike the ground? And then redo parts A and B. If the helicopter was descending instead of ascending at 5 meters per second when the package was released. Again, let's start by listing the variables. The package is dropped on an ascending helicopter, which means the moment the package is released, it has a velocity that is the same as the helicopter's velocity. Like this ball, if I release it when my hand is moving upward, its initial velocity as a falling object will be the same as the velocity of my hand at the moment of the release. Which means that the initial velocity of the falling package is an upward 5 meters per second. Upward, so it's a positive 5. The package goes up before coming down. At the moment of the release, the helicopter is 280 meters above ground. So 280 meters is the displacement delta y. In this case, the distance traveled by the package is more than 280 meters. But we don't have to worry about that because in our equations we have delta y, the displacement, not the distance traveled. Delta y is the change in position, a vector. So it has a direction. The position starts here, ends there. The change in position is from here to there, a downward 280 meters. And therefore, it is negative. We are looking for the time it takes t for the package to strike the ground. The third thing we know here is the acceleration and I'm just going to round it to 10 and it is a negative 10 because it's downward. There is no final velocity involved so this equation can be convenient. Delta y is vot plus 1 half at squared. So delta y is negative 280 that's 5t plus 1 half negative 10t squared. So we have a quadratic equation. I'm just going to simplify it a little bit. But I'm going to move these two terms to the other side. So I'm going to get 5t squared minus 5t minus 280 equals to 0. And then I'm going to divide by 5 for each, on both sides. So it's t squared minus t minus 56 equals to 0. Now you can solve this using quadratic solution equation or Fortunately for this one, we can actually factor it. You factor this to be t minus 8 times t minus c, t plus 7 equals to 0, which means the time is either 8 seconds or negative 7 seconds. So of course our answer is this positive one, 8 seconds. So it takes the package 8 seconds to hit the ground. This negative 7 seconds is actually also a meaningful number for the time because if this package starts all the way from here getting shot straight up, it would take 7 seconds for it to reach over there so it would be going upward at 5 meters per second. Upward and then to the maximum height and then down. Which means 
if the package started right here, it would take seven seconds to get there and then eight seconds to go down. That's why if you this is the t equals to zero, then the time negative seven seconds would be when the package was back there. In part B, we're looking for the velocity at which the package strikes the ground. Now we have one, two, three, four, four things. When you know four things, any equation that has the final velocity can be used. So you can use any of these three. This one is probably the easiest one, so you can just plug in the numbers and then find the final velocity. But right now, I'm going to do something different. Suppose you want to avoid having to solve a quadratic equation. One choice you have is for you to find the final velocity before you find the time. In that case, we will have to use the v squared equation. Before you find the time, we, that's what we can use to find the final velocity. So v squared equals to vo squared plus 2a delta y. The final velocity is what we're looking for. The initial velocity is 5 plus 2a negative 280. And this gives us 5625. And so you have to take the square root on both sides to find the velocity, which gives you either positive or negative 75 meters per second. Now, which one should we use? Right before it hits the ground, the velocity is upward or downward? It's downward velocity, so the answer is negative 75 meters per second. And then you can use this to find the time. You can use v equals to vo plus at. 5 plus negative 10 times t equals to negative 75. And this will give you the time that is, uh, of course, 8 seconds. So if you want to avoid the quadratic equation, that's what you can do. Now, what do you think you will get if, by mistake, you use final velocity equals to positive 75 meters per second? What do you think your answer is going to be? If you had used the positive 75 equals to VO plus AT, you would have gotten negative 7 seconds. Because if the package started right here, it would have an upward 75 meters per second. And then by the time it gets there, it would have a 5 meters per second going up and then down. So of course, that means if you get a negative time, then you should know that you've gotten the sign wrong and then you have to fix it to make sure the final velocity is negative instead of positive. Now, part C. If the helicopter is descending at 5 meters per second when the package is released, that means the package would have an initial velocity that is uh, negative 5 meters per second. That means the package would just uh, go down without going up. And the delta y would still be the same 280 negative. And we're looking for the time, the acceleration, still the same gravitational acceleration. Again, you can use this equation. All you have to change is this is a negative 5. And then solve for the time if you choose to solve the quadratic equation. Or you can use the v squared equation to find the final velocity first, and then use the final velocity to find the time. Or you can solve part C by looking at this here. When the helicopter was going up, the package has an upward velocity positive 5 meters per second. It goes up and then down to the starting position. This part, the upward and downward trips are symmetric, which means uh, if it starts with 5 meters per second going upward, by the time it comes back to here, it would have a 5 meters per second downward velocity, which means uh, this segment of the motion for the 
second package is going to be the same as the this segment of motion for the first package which means uh, of course they both will arrive on the ground with the same final velocity that's uh, negative 75. Now in terms of time let's see the time it takes from here up and then down was 8 seconds. That means uh, if I know how much time it takes for this package to reach the maximum height I can just double it and then subtract it from the 8 seconds I would get this time right here. So if you shoot something straight up at 5 meters per second how long would it take for it to reach the maximum height? Since the acceleration is negative 10, that means the velocity changes by negative 10 meters per second every second. So it will take half a second, 5 divided by 10, 1 half. Half a second for the velocity to become 0. Half a second up, half a second down. So out of the 8 seconds total time up and down, it takes one second over here, that means seven seconds down. That means the time would be seven seconds. Did you notice this thing here? See if the packet starts from here, it would go up and down and it would be symmetric, this upward trip and the downward trip. This part takes 7 seconds. That means this part also takes 7 seconds. That's why it's 7. Again, before we finish, I would like to plot some graphs. For the velocity versus time graph, the first one, when the helicopter was ascending, the initial velocity would be positive 5. The slope, which is the acceleration, is negative 10. So it's a constant negative slope. That's if it's the, the helicopter was ascending. If it's descending, the velocity will start at negative 5. Same slope. That would be the case. And uh, if you draw a position versus time graph, let's say this is the initial position. Constant negative acceleration, as long as the acceleration is negative, you're going to have a downward curve. And the slope of this graph is the velocity. So for this uh, ascending part, it was, you would start with a positive slope, downward curve. So the graph will be like this. If it starts with a negative 5 meters per second downward velocity, that means uh, the slope starts out negative and it's a downward curve. So it will be something like this. Now, because uh, the motion ends with the, at the same negative 75, that means uh, both of these, uh, they should end at uh, negative 75. Of course, now it's not drawn to scale. And uh, the initial velocity, if it's upward, it will go up to the maximum height and then down to here. And then this part will be the same as that. So let's see if I extend it. At the end, this part would be 280 meters. 280 meters below the starting position. Now, of course, I can choose to, instead of draw, plotting the y versus t graph, I can also plot delta y, which is uh, y minus uh, y naught, final position minus the initial position, and uh, versus t graph. That means uh, the initial displacement will be 0, so this just uh, shifts to 0, and then this will be the graph. If the package starts with negative 5 meters velocity, then the graph will be a downward curve like this. Which means that these two graphs are exactly the same except for the position would start on the initial position. The displacement would start on zero.